Welcome to Titley Scientific's tutorial video series for Anabat Insight. Today I will show you how to create a basic decision tree. We'll start with the data set recorded on an Anabat Swift. There are hundreds of files in these folders, which will take some time to manually analyse. So I'm going to create a decision tree to automate some of this process. Firstly, I'm going to ensure my trigger is correctly set. I will do this by opening a file and setting the smoothness and the ZC sensitivity correctly. See the triggers and smoothness tutorial video for more information. If we go to the search tab, we can select decision tree. For a basic decision tree, we will choose to run off the average metrics. This means that each file will pass through the decision tree based off its average metrics. Now we'll take a quick look at the draft decision tree I've developed for my region. I've simplified it for the purpose of this tutorial. A decision tree is just a dichotomous key with if-else statements. You can see in this tree, at each criteria, I have an if statement, which means that if the file passes that criteria, it will move along the if branch and the same for else statements. If a file doesn't pass the criteria, it will move down the else branch. At the end of each branch, I will place an action. An action can be to send to trash, mark a file, add a species label, or other metadata. Let me demonstrate how this tree would work. I have a bat file. The first criteria is the all bats filter. This file passes that. The next criteria is pulse count. The file needs to have a minimum of three pulses. This file does, so it passes. The next criteria is based on the average characteristic frequency. This file has a characteristic frequency of 32 kilohertz, so it doesn't pass a minimum criteria of 68. It fails the next few filters based on characteristic frequency, but will pass the criteria of frequency 27 to 36 kilohertz. The next criteria is time between calls. This file has a TBC of 158 milliseconds. So it passes this criteria of a maximum TBC of 200. Now that it has passed that criteria, it will be assigned the action of a species label of Calanolobus gouldii. You'll need to create a decision tree based off species in your region. Keep in mind that there will be species complexes that cannot be separated. Now we'll go back to Anabat Insight. We'll start at the top of the tree, click Add in the search bar, select the criteria type filter, then choose the filter All Bats, then click the Add button. You'll see the criteria has been added to the search bar. Now you can choose to add to the If or Else branch. I will do the Else first, click on Add. Now I decided to send files that didn't pass the All Bats filter to the trash, so I'll add an action here. Select Move to Trash, then click the Add button. You can see here it's been added under the Else branch. Now I'll add to the If branch. I'll select the criteria type of Pulse Count and say a minimum of three pulses, then click Add. The Pulse Count criteria can now be seen below the If statement. I'll continue to add my criteria and actions until I've completed the tree. Basically, you can select a recent filter or click New to create a new filter and enter it into the tree. I'll speed this process up in the video, but if you want more instructions, please see the user manual.
Here I have my completed tree. Once your tree is completed, you can choose to save the decision tree by clicking on the Save button at the top of the search panel. Choose where you want to save the tree, give it a name and click Save. This will also save all of the associated filters within the tree. If you want to create a new tree, then you click this button and if you wanted to load a saved tree, click this button. Now I want to check that my analysis settings match my viewing settings. I can see that the ZC sensitivity is 16 and the smoothness is set to 9. Again, we are running an average decision tree. Now we'll go to the bottom of the tab and click Run Search. It may take a few minutes depending on your number of files and computer speed. It will automatically open the Results tab, displaying where each file ended up in the decision tree. You can open files directly from here and scroll through them. If we go back to the Recordings tab, you can see files have been assigned species labels and some recordings have been sent to the trash. You can check your trash files and either restore the files or empty the trash. If you want to edit your decision tree, just click on the criteria you wish to edit, then click New and change the criteria. Here, I will change the maximum frequency from 62 to 68. Click OK, then click the Edit button. You can see it's been updated in the tree. If you want to edit an action, click on the action you wish to change, then select the new action and click Add. Don't forget to save your changes. There are a few important things to remember when creating a decision tree. Firstly, if you are using metrics as the main criteria, for example, frequency, ensure every frequency is covered. In this example, there is a 1 kHz gap between 25 and 26, so a file with a characteristic frequency of 25.6 won't be assigned to either branch. By ensuring the criteria match exactly, no files will be missed. Secondly, when using an average decision tree, add a catch-all to every empty else statement to check for decision tree errors. I like to use mark file, but don't do this when using a per pulse decision tree. If I go back to Insight, I can check the mark tab to see if anything was missed, then diagnose the mistakes in the tree and correct them. Here I can examine these files and see that they have a characteristic frequency which was originally missed in my decision tree. We've since corrected that mistake when we edited the filter. My third important tip is if you change your decision tree after running the search, ensure to remove all species labels and unmark all recordings before rerunning the search. Otherwise you'll end up with multiple labels have incorrect labels or marking from the previous search. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I'll be creating a video for more advanced decision trees soon. If you have any questions, check out the user manual on our website or contact us at insight at titley-scientific.com. Thanks.